Hey, welcome to the uh, first presentation on statistics. And what is statistics, or what are statistics anyway? What is it? Well, statistics is an area of maths involved with collecting data, like making measurements up here, and uh, then drawing graphs and trying to analyse what's going on with the information we've obtained. So that information could be in many different forms, and uh, it's one of the most important areas in mathematics for your average person in the street because surveys are done, graphs are drawn about how business is progressing and so on. It's very important that you understand about statistics. So let's look around the screen and uh, I think we should start with this data set here. A data set is a set of information and here it's numbers uh, that's been collected to describe something. And if you look in the small print up here, these are the rhino poaching statistics in South Africa over the years from 2010 to 2013. And we can see, thank goodness, that it's gone down here now to 273 in 2013. So that's good news. But what do all these numbers mean? Eh? Well, what does that mean? It's very hard, isn't it? When people collect uh, a lot of data like this, uh, that uh, the uh, to get some meaning out of it, can we actually analyse that? And uh, that's what statistics is about. Have a look at this graph down here. Some uh, columns rising up. They're all separate. Can you see they're all separate columns? So each of those columns means something different, and we're comparing it. That's a three D diagram there. You might do some of those later on. We'll be mainly working on. Uh, 2D because you'll be drawing it on paper or uh, using Excel and uh, you can draw a 3D in Excel but uh, we'll be probably uh, just sticking to 2D drawings in this uh, early stage now. So what about over here? It's uh, slicing up what looks like a pie, doesn't it? This round thing looks like a pie and it's sliced up into different percentages for different aspects of what's been measured here. What's being measured here is a motivation behind cyber attacks, where people get into computer systems and change things around. You've probably heard of that. So cyber crime is red. Um, hack, uh, what's we've got here? Hacktivism, hacking, cyber espionage to find out what another business is doing, perhaps, and cyber warfare to actually uh, interact with another country and, and mess them up a bit. Okay, so that's an interesting modern sort of uh, investigation there, a statistical investigation. And we've got a graph here, a pie chart or a pie graph, which has been divided up pretty exactly here to percentages to uh, split the uh, activity up between these groups here. So we can see that mostly the uh, hacking is cyber crime, trying to get people's information and that sort of stuff. Okay, so graphs really do help us understand a data set where uh, it's just numbers, and numbers confuse people. And what's the saying from English? A picture's worth a thousand words? Well, I might say here, a graph is worth a thousand figures. Okay, figures confuse people. Graphs make it a bit clearer. Let's come down to this one here. What's it say here? Distribution of book prizes. So this is how many books were these different prices here. What do you notice about this graph compared to this one up here? What do you notice? Oh, well, all the columns are next to each other. There's no gaps. They all are representing the same thing. It's sort of continuum, isn't it? What's the continuum about here? It's continuous. What's it about? It's about book prices down here in dollars. And there's no gaps because you can get a book from the cheapest price down here through to the dearest one up here, and there's no gaps. Not like up at this graph here. They did not, they are not uh, representing a continuous set here. They were separate or discrete. Okay, we're going to use these words later on to show uh, differences between sets of data. They, there are quite a, a number of different uh, sets of data that you can uh, gather from measurements and numbers to opinions and who's going to vote for whom in the next election, all that stuff. What about what's happened over here? This is going to be a bit later on in your statistical experience. So let's go back there. Um, what's the curve? How can they put a curve 
over the top of all that. What's, what's going on there? That seems to be even more continuous, doesn't it? Uh, rather than separate columns, there's a continuous curve. Ah, that's going to be interesting looking at that later on. Okay, well, are you ready to see what to, you, data you can gather and how to represent it and how to explain what's going on to other people? You're the buddy young mathematician. They expect you about it. Tell, tell people about these things. Okay, well, here we are. Let's investigate this word statistics, the area of mathematics involved in data collection and answering a particular question maybe somebody's got, like um, what are book prices like these days? Do they vary much? And we'll go off and we'll uh, collect our data and then draw a graph perhaps. So that's that area of mathematics involved in collecting data and explaining what we can see from it. Okay, so look at this. You've got to organise your data. It's going to be maybe descriptive, describe what's going on in a particular data set, or it could be inferential. Uh, you might be able to infer something about a whole lot of things. If you, uh, here it is down here, statistical inference. If you collect a sample and then you say, well, we reckon that represents a bigger group and we're going to say something or infer something about that bigger group. And uh, obviously it's collection of data and it's uh, doing maybe science experiments. It's everywhere, statistical analysis here. So very, very important area of mathematics to sciences, to economists, to socio sociologists, about people's behaviour and things. Very, very important. So let's go and get some skills, eh? Okay, well, here we are. Here's our definition of statistics. is the study of solving problems and answering questions by collecting, organising and analysing data. And we're going to start doing that right away in a minute and uh, see what you think. So here's our opening problem. This is an interesting problem. Zach and Ed both enjoy going fishing with their fathers. Here we are up here. They record how many fish they catch each time they go fishing over the holidays. Oh, Zach went a few more times, or two, twice more than Ed. So things to think about here, if you want to compare these two guys fishing, by just looking at these values, hang on, let's go back, by just looking at these values, is it easy to tell who catches more fish? No. Is it? I don't know. What do you think? Okay, maybe discuss that with your classmates. Is it easy to tell from that uh, two sets of data there, from the two boys? Would it be fair to compare them by finding the total number of fish caught by each boy? Would that be fair? Think about that. How could we determine which boy generally catches more fish? This is our opening problem, and we're going to find what statistics can do to help us answer those sorts of questions. Okay, so uh, discuss that amongst your classmates, and uh, we'll go on now. Let's have a look. Okay, so here's our statistical approach, if you like. Examine a problem which may be solved using data. Pose the correct questions. Now, this is very, very important, because uh, you, you want to uh, answer some particular inquiry that you've got in your mind, like, um, what's the most popular drink? people drink at recess time at school. But you, you've got to say, well, how am I going to find that out? The correct questions, well, you've got to uh, ask people what's their favourite drink, what do they drink, or maybe just find what's uh, sold most at the school, uh, at the tuck shop, the canteen. Okay, so uh, you've got to get your question right. Make sure you know what data set you're trying to collect here, whether it be opinions or measuring people's heights and all that stuff. You get, then go out and you collect that data. Okay, and then we've got to organise it in some way, and that's what we're going to learn here for the first time. And then we want to display it, and graphs help people understand numbers, don't they? A, a, a graph's worth a thousand numbers. I think that's a new Huttism there. Analyse the data and make a conclusion and write a report. Okay. And that report is very, very important. Be able to explain our mathematics. And uh, that's our reasoning, if you like, coming in there. In the national curriculum, you buddy young math mathematicians like yourself are expected to be able to do some problem solving and also do some mathematical reasoning. So this sort of thing here we got need to work on. So you'll be writing a little bit about your maths. That's not been done before, has it? Starts about now, about year seven. 
Okay, so let's have a look at data collection. Oh, we've got two things. What's going on here? I've been busy. These are all motors. Can you see? They're an engine in a car. What they put in, in vehicles these days. And there's lots of them. This goes on forever, though. There's thousands of these coming out of the factory. And so uh, one way of describing what's going on with these motors would be to do a census. Measure all of them. It might be how long they last before they start to rattle. Hey, we couldn't measure all of them, could we? Because we'd wear them out. There'd be nothing to sell. So a census involves collecting data about every individual. Oh, let's just go back there. Collecting data about every individual in the whole population. And that's usually not very likely, very time-consuming, expensive, and you would ruin all your motors, all these motors here. You have to wear them out to see how long on the average they are last, if you like. So that's not going to be practical. So what are we going to do? Come down here. A sample. Let's take a sample of motors out of the total population of all motors. So population, are you getting a whole idea here? The whole population does not mean a population of people necessarily. It could be the whole population of items you're investigating. Here it's car engines. Because everybody wants to know how much guarantee you're going to give me for my car. You know, there's five years, unlimited warranty, seven years, all sorts of things. So what are we going to do? We're going to do this down here. We're going to take a sample involving a part of the population only. Because we can't wear out all the motors. Or we haven't got the time or the resources to go and measure everything. Okay, how many, uh, what's the height of uh, pine, uh, pine trees in a forest? And there are 10,000 pine trees. Uh-oh, we can't measure those, taking too much time. So we're going to take a sample. And the question arises, of course, here, I've got a bundle of, how many have I got there? A bundle of 10. Is that enough? How, how many should I actual, actually sample from the whole population to get a good idea? Now, this is called inferential statistics here, where we do some sampling and say, from this sample, what can we infer about the whole population? Okay, it's called inferential statistics. It's very important. People do it a lot before uh, surveys, for, uh, they do surveys before elections, because elections are a census, aren't they? Everybody expected to vote. And if you uh, do a survey, you're going to take a sample and you're going to try and predict what's going to happen in the election. So get the idea. Well, sometimes we're just going to draw graphs about the data set that we've got. Other times we're going to infer and uh, estimate what's going on in the whole population from our sample. All right, come on down now. And uh, here's a, a question for you to try and get your head around. What's the difference between a census and a sample? Would a census or a sample be used to investigate the length of time an electric light globe will last? The causes of accidents in a particular state over one weekend and the number of people who use white bright toothpaste. Well, the first one, you can't test every light globe, you burn them out. None left for sale. So you would use a sample there, not a census. Would you measure all of the causes of car accidents? Yes, you could. Because we want to know what's going on. Hopefully there weren't that many, and it's, it's achievable to measure all of them. So when it's achievable to measure the whole population of things, then you call it a census. And the last one, could you interview the whole population to find out who uses white, bright toothpaste? And the, the whole population would be all the users, you're trying to find out all the users of white, bright toothpaste. No, you take a sample, see how popular it was. Okay, so that's the idea. Do you get it now? Let's go on now and have a look. So here's some questions for you. State whether a census or a sample will be used for each of these. So have a go at those and the answers are on the next slide there. So you can uh, toggle forward and uh, have a look, but pause it for the moment and try to answer those. Discuss it with your classmates. Good to talk about maths. Okay, let's have a look now. There are the answers. I hope got a few right there. Okay, we're just warming up and getting our thinking right, our reasoning right for the area of mathematics called statistics. Let's go for, further on now. Okay, so the first type of uh, data that we're going to look at was that back on the first screen where we had a pie chart and we had separate columns. 
So this is called categorical data. Uh, it fits into categories. You went out and you measured how many males or females were a sporting thing, and you had male and female, and here were the thousands of people who were there, male and female. And down here, here's a different data set. Here's some numbers here of uh, people with different colour hair. And we could draw, what are these? These are column, vertical column graph, this is called. And so this was the number of blondes, this was the number of redheads, etc. So you can read the scale off. Just keep in mind, they are graphs. You can't be rough. This has got to be to scale. Okay. And this is to scale up here as well. You've got to have a scale there. And over here, the pie chart chart, people quite like this because it's very easy to see what proportion is in each group, really. Percentage of general uh, games played by school students here. Volleyball, cricket, football, and so on. So you've got to divide your pie up in proportion. Now, they've got numbers around here. Don't lie it that much, but they would be percentages of the total playing these sports. Okay, so that's the idea. The total, uh, or the percentage of the total that are playing the sport. So you can see how the pie is carved up. Okay, so uh, I think you probably have seen some of these graphs before. Don't know whether you've drawn them. We have to be very accurate. Just keep in mind, they are graphs. They are mathematical descriptions and must be exact. To describe our data set okay let's keep going here so here's the definition of categorical data and it's important here that you make notes on these things as we go through in this new area of mathematics for you called statistics so categorical data is data which can be placed in categories seems silly doesn't it um, it's uh, but it's not silly because mathematical language is very commonsensical so when you see categorical, it links up directly with categories from English, which are different groups of things, aren't they? When you put them in categories, you put people in different groups. So look at all these dudes down here. And what groups do you think we're going to put them in? These are groups of their favourite subjects, I would say. They've been asked, what's your favourite subject? And we've got all those answers there. So we want to describe to people now this data set. It's opinions, isn't it? And so it's in different categories, different uh, categories, different opinions of the best subjects to study. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to do with that. Oh, here we are. We knew we had to organise it in some way because that was one of our first steps in the statistical procedure. We've got our question, we ask people, we've got their answers, but now we have to organise. So the first part of organising is drawing up a table. So let's have a look. We've got the category that was measured, mathematics, art, science, music, English. So go along, and when somebody says mathematics, we put a stroke there. It's called a tally column. Don't know whether you've done this. And we keep putting strokes as we come across somebody in that category. So you just go along the line, and you put an art person, and then you might have a science, and another maths. And here's a little tricky do here. When you get to five, you put across it, put the next one across it. So that's a bundle of five. Why? Well, later on, you don't want this, do you? At the end of your tally, you don't want to have to count all them up. It's too confusing. So what you do is you don't just keep putting them like that. You put one for music, another one, another one, another one. And when you get to the fifth one, you put it over there. So if you get a lot of them... It's easy to count up rather than having lots of strokes. This would be five, another five, that's 10, and three is 13. Okay, so that would be the way in which you would do that. Okay, so don't have big long rows of strokes there, tallies, tally marks if you like. Do bundles of five, makes it quicker at the end to work out how many you've got. So then you put how often that group occurred. How frequent was that event, you might say in English, how frequent it was. So again, a maths word is frequency, linking directly with the English, easy enough. So there were four in this group here. Oh, hang on, we just got to go back here. There were four in this group here, so you put four. Three there. Okay, so now we have the data organised in 
to the categories and how many are in each category and we'll then add up how many people we surveyed up above and there were two rows of eight or 16 so just remember if you have rows of individuals here you wouldn't count them up you wouldn't do multiple addition you simply say well we had a row of eight and there were two rows of eight that's 16 two eight to 16 use multiplication rather than multiple addition too hard to add lots of things up the same thing here bundles of five two fives are ten okay you don't have to count over and over use multiplication okay so here we are the next definition for you right in your notes the frequency of a category is the number of data points in that category okay so data is plural and uh, there's many measurements there and that's your data set okay come on down the mode okay this is uh, trying to describe something about the data set in simple terms and the mode is the one that occurs most frequently here okay so what's the mode in this one well let's have a look the one that occurs most frequently is music very popular subject so there were six people who favored music there okay so that was the mode all right let's have a look now at trying to get some schools going here so uh, we're doing a, a, a survey here of the students in a class traveling to school we're going to we're going to measure what they say they t how they travel to school on the particular on a particular day so we've got walking people bicycle bus car and train so they're all in different categories aren't they so it's categorical data and here the uh, set for monday tuesday wednesday no can't be thursday friday saturday they don't go on top right so, so these are just different weekdays on a particular uh, day i think so um i'm not sure how they've got those uh, that that group there that that's the numbers they've done them in fives i'm not sure okay do draw a frequency table so overall this is all the whole data set that they have done so it's not days of the week but how many people walking do we have one bundle of five how many people went by bicycle one bundle of five and three over okay so we're just going to total them up here one bundle of five and two over seven two bundles of five is ten and one is eleven and a bundle of four okay so we have 35 students were measured overall and what is the most frequent way of getting to school is car because it occurs most frequently it's called the mode okay the mode is most frequently occurring um, data point okay let's go here to the next little set of exercises so you can practice these skills and just gradually build them up so pause the presentation and have a go at those questions I'm going to then show you the answers okay here we are how did you go with your tallies and your answers to those questions you might discuss that with your classmates and your teacher it'd be good it's good to talk about maths okay let's go on ah now we want to draw some diagrams now okay so um, we saw some of these back on the first page of this uh, presentation vertical column graph oh yeah that's what we mentioned different categories here okay so they're separate columns they must not touch each other okay we're trying to describe what subjects people are doing and these didn't fit in the little columns so we can put them above or you put them down the bottom and this must be to scale and so we've got one square here is one and then two squares is two etc it must be to scale and the height of the column corresponds to how often it occurred so you draw it up to its height which is how many times that occurred okay what about this one often people call this a bar graph over here but it's technically not it's a column graph a bar chart comes out from the left we don't use these very much because it's customary to uh, put the category down the bottom but here we can actually put the frequency down there if, to, if it's to some scale and then draw the bars out from the left here so it's a horizontal bar chart okay or bar graph or whatever 
and a pie chart. Okay, what about a pie chart? You've got to divide a pie up. So that's 360 degrees, isn't it? You've got to divide that circle up into the right slices. So it's parts of 360. So if mathematics was 25% or a quarter of the total people, it's a quarter of 360, which is 90. So that should be a 90 degree in there. Okay, so that's got to be precisely measured with, do you, I don't know whether you've used these before, it's called a protractor. So you're measuring around the circle, a number of degrees, which represents a particular category. So if mathematics is 25% or a quarter of all scores, it's got to have a quarter of the circle and a quarter, let's just check it, a quarter of 360 is 90 degrees because fours and a four goes once into 360 goes 90. So it's 90 degrees. We're going to do that a bit later on because people like to uh, use pie graphs and colour them in and stuff like that. Okay. So let's have a look at uh, looking at uh, another example and building up some skills here. So we've got a graph here that somebody has drawn from the set of data from their table of uh, values. And uh, I want you to be able to read this off now. What is the least popular drink and what is the mode of the data and how many students drink orange juice and what percentage of students drink chocolate milk. So let's do the... The first one, iced coffee. There it is. It's the smallest one, only 10 people. Soft drink is the mode. There it is there. It is how many in here? I think it's 35. Reading that off, halfway between each of these. So this is 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. So that looks like it's 35. How many drink orange juice? Here we are up here. We've got to read across there. So it's 27, it's halfway between 22, 24, 26, 28. It's halfway between there's 27. Can you read that off? What's the total number of students per purchasing drinks? Well, this one was 27, this is 35, this is 18, and this is 10. So when you add all those up, you get 90. And we need this because we want the percentage drinking chocolate milk. So chocolate milk is 18 out of 90 times 100 to get a percent. Because percent means per 100. Now, have you seen the probability videos that uh, were produced for uh, the national curriculum in Huddimas? You could say, what is the probability that a student chosen at random drinks chocolate milk. It would be 18 out of 90. So it links with probability quite nicely here. Statistics and probability go hand in glove because the probability of choosing a student at random who drank chocolate milk would be 18 chances in 90. So I hope you remember that stuff. It all links up. Okay, let's go on. And here's some for you to do. Got uh, some questions there. There are four questions there. So I want you to pause the presentation and see if you understand what the graphs are all about now. Okay, let's have a look at the answers. And there are answers to our four questions. So make sure you've got your tallies right and separate those columns and you know, just have mathematical precision here. Budding young mathematicians, keep it nice and accurate. All right, let's go on now. Oh, we want this one. Okay, let's have another example. So uh, here's a, a set of data, and it's about what is your favourite fruit, and we're going to construct a pie chart. So we've measured students, 13 like oranges, 21 apples, 10 bananas, 7 pineapples, 9 pears, a total of 60 students. So there you are, 60 students. So we're going to divide a the pie up here, so there's 360 degrees in a circle in a pie around here. So we have to divide it up according to or in proportion with these numbers. So there are 60 students. So one student repre is represented by a 60th, here we are, a 60th of 360. 
That's six degrees per student. Now, there were 13 students who liked oranges. So it's 13 lots of, lots of means times six degrees. They each are going to be represented by six degrees of the pi. So it's 78. 21 students, uh, each six degrees, 21 lots of six and so on. So you're going to get these numbers here, these numbers of degrees to represent the slice of pi for that group. So then you've got to start somewhere and um, we could start on any line, draw a line, put a protractor on it. So a protractor measures degrees as a scale around the outside. So when you get to 78, you put a line and then start measuring again so that you can split up that 360 degrees in one revolution, remember, into smaller values to represent accurately each of those groups. So we're going to draw some pie, gra pie graphs. And of course, all of these graphs can be done with technology. And that's going to be, that's a separate video. And you could go to Huddy Mass and go to the Casio 9860 uh, set of videos on statistics. Because it's there for you. And have a look there as well. Let's go on. Okay, so here we are. The next uh, couple of questions are about pie charts. So, uh, first of all, we want to look at this and make some statements. And then we need to divide our pie up according to this um, group here of four different categories of eye colour. And uh, how can you represent that on a 360 degree circle? Okay. So have a go at that, pause presentation. I'll show you the answers now. Okay, so here we are. I hope you got your percentages correct here for each of these. Okay, uh, well percentages, but we wanted degrees, didn't we? How many degrees each one uh, represented? So uh, did you get that right, I wonder? A number of degrees here for each of those pieces of pie. So percentages weren't as handy as degrees. They want they put percentages next to it like this, but you need to have your protractor anywhere, have your protractor and measuring how many degrees first of all. So remember how to do that. It's the uh, total in the group, um, number in the group over the total times three sixty. So just re just just check that you can do that. So the number in the group over the total, so that's uh, the total number of students times it's that fraction of 360 degrees, okay? So you're taking a fraction of 360 because you need to come back to a protractor to measure it, not just percentages because percentages don't help you measure in degrees. You've got to find that percentage of 360 to actually do the measurement. All right, I hope you're going well. You might have to talk to your teacher and classmates about some of this. Uh, make sure you're on track. Okay, let's go on now. So far, we have been doing sort of uh, just measuring of people in the categories, and those categories didn't involve any number. But here, numerical data. Ah, data with numbers in it. So here's the dudes again, and here we are. We've got two rows of eight. Two rows of eight students. So we've got 16. We'll use multiplication, not multiple addition, adding them all up or counting them all up. We'll say there's two rows here, both of eight. So it's 16 students. And this time they're giving an answer in numbers, naught through three. I wonder what that could be. I've been asked something. Is that hours of homework a night? Something like that. Mm, I don't know. This dude says he does three. Well, we might have to have a look at that. Okay, so with number data, ah, it was number of instruments they can play. Okay, so some play no instruments, some play one, two, or three. And we, we counted them all up, and here's our tallies again. So there were five who don't play an instrument, seven who play one, three who play two, and that one dude who plays is very skillful and plays three different instruments. So there were 16 students, as we said before, and um, we're now dealing with numbers 
not just word categories here. The categories we've got are numerical. It's a number itself and then it, there's a frequency how many times each of those categories occur. All right, so let's have a look now at um, how we could represent that. So this time, the number of instru instruments. So this is the new idea here. The categories, remember the gap, because you can't have half an instrument. Nothing in there. One instrument, two instruments, three. So the data sets are still in categories, and they are discrete, even though they're numbers. They're separated. Okay, There's not a continuum. You cannot have somebody playing one and a half instruments. So they must be separate columns here. You must have a nice scale here. And here's another way. Look over here. This is another way you could do it. Rather than a scale up there, simply put dots. So you count the dots and you see that there are five people in that group and so on. That's another way. Some people like that. It appeals to their eye and they can see that better than reading a scale over here. Some people like the dots better. And then it's something called an ordered stem and leaf plot. Now, this is quite mathematical later on, and it's not one that the average person in the street understands. It's uh, saying, well, first of all, we're going to have a scale. One stroke seven, that's that one and that seven, means 17. Okay, so, and two with a zero means 20. So this row, the first one, would be this data set 12, 12, 15, 17, 18, and 19. We're going to look at this later. So you take off all the ones and you just look at the second figure in each of these. Okay, and then you organise the data set. Now there's a big advantage to this, and we'll see it later on in the next uh, video, actually. So uh, we're going to start to experiment with some other graphs now with numerical data. Okay, so here we go. Here is um, the uh, set of data, and we're going to make a, uh, a plot here with what's called a stem and leaf. Okay, so here we make a stem. So to do that, you look at the numbers in front, the tens. Okay, and it goes from one up to seven. Somewhere there's a seven there. Here it is. So we put them in ascending order. Put them in order down here. One through seven. We then read the data set. So here's 21. So 20, I'll put a one. Then 33, I'll put a three. Then 41, I'll put a one. Then 17, I'll put a seven. You, you only read the data set once. Okay. Don't go through and get all the 20s and do that. It's too long. 24. So I'll put that one in there. 38. So if where's 3? I'll put an 8. Okay. I don't like the way that keeps doing that. So I have 1, 4, 3, 8 or something there. And I keep going now. 44 would be a 0. 12 would be a 2. Can you see the idea? You're actually detaching the um, last digit away from the tens here. So the first digit or first two digits is a bigger number go on the stem. And these are like little leaves. So this is called the stem. And this is the leaf of the other number. So we have to have a system here to do this new stem and leaf idea. So you put all your scores down. Let's have a look. So when you do that, this is what it looks like. So you put you always have to put your scale. Scale one stroke seven, that's your stem and that's your leaf, means 17. So that's the explanation. So this is coding numbers because this is peculiar to um, what? Discrete data or categorical data. They're in categories here, if you like. Different numbers, no, no values between them. And uh, we want to organize that data set. Okay, so we've got that to this point now. So what does it say? Well, we can see here straight away, there's one way out from the others. It's lying out from the others. So it's called an outlier. Again, mathematics language is really good because it is explanatory. It tells, tends to be 
self-explanatory really. It's the data point is an outlier. It's lying out from the rest of the data set. Okay, so that's one thing that that helps us with. But this is not in order here. This is 17, then it's 12, then it's 15, then it's 19, then it's 12, then it's 8. Maybe we should organise that a bit better and put it in some sort of order here. Order it. Okay, so let's uh, have a go at that now. And if we do, so what we will do is we've got, I'll put it here what we would have. We'd have 7, 2, 5, 9, 2, 8, and then 1, 4, 6, 3, 9, 1, 0, 5, 4. Let's get rid of that because when you go up screen, it does that. So here we've got 9. All right, now let's organise this. We want to put these in order of size. Okay, order of the size of that number. So <clears throat> what could we do? Well over here let's write them down. Two, two, five, oh, two, two, yeah, five, seven, eight, nine. So if we put that in pencil and then over here put them in order. Okay, so we've got six, we've got a two, a two, a five, a seven, eight, and nine. So we can with our eraser rub that out and put them as two, two, five, seven, eight, nine. Okay, because now we can see there were two 12s, 115, 117, 118, 119, and then we went up to a 21. So we do the same thing here. We're going to take these, and we're going to say there's a 1 and a 1. That gets rid of these two. Then we, our, oh, hang on, there's a 0 there for a start. Uh, that's the smallest. And then there's a three, a four, another four, a five, and a six in order there. So remember, this means two is 20, 21, 21, 23. So I can now rub those out, erase those, and put my ordered set in. One, one, three, four, four, five, six. Okay, so you get the idea. We now got our data ordered a bit better. In we've got it ordered. It looks a bit better because this starts at twenty, twenty-one, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-four. 25, 26. So the adva one of the big advantages of, of this is that it's all in order, but we've got our original measurements there, the data, because this is numerical data. So we've got numbers as measurements, not just a category of eye colour or something. So we've got our actual data set present. Okay, so it's a bit more complicated, this one. Okay, let's go down now. So we end up with this thing here. So this is ordered. They're all in order here. Okay, and you must write your scale every time because otherwise people reading it won't know what's going on. All right, so let's have a look now at you doing something. All right, we've got a tennis player who's won the following matches in tournaments during the last 18 months. Organise it, we know we have to do that. Draw a column graph and then answer some questions. So how are you going to organise it? We'll look at the number of wins. It goes from 0 to 6. So we'll list those down. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Then we go through and read the data set once. There's a 1. So you put uh, 1 next to a 1. There's a 2. So you put one of these in. There's a 0. So you put your tally. So scan the data only once. Don't go and pick out all the zeros first and all that. It takes too long. And when you do it, you could either circle it or just put a line through it. Don't, you know, you don't scribble all over it. You need to be able to check it later, perhaps. Okay, so you've got all your tallies here now in bundles of five to make it easy to add up how many are there. So you then add them up. There's six in that group, 16, 
Here we've got two fives are 10 and one is 13, a five and a three is eight, and so on down the group. And then we'll total it because you want to know how many there were. Well, 48, yes, two rows of 24. Each row here had 24 in it. Two 24s are 48. All right, so we can draw a column graph now. Up the side here goes frequency, the number of times each category occurred. And the categories are matches one. You must separate columns. Separate. And the reason for that is clear, isn't it? You can't have numbers between those. You can't have a half a win in a tennis match. Okay, so this numerical data is discrete. Okay, they're separate groups. Okay, it's very important. Okay, what about how many times does the player advance past the second match of a tournament? Okay, so second match means um, at least two matches. So it doesn't include two. So what's the likelihood of getting more than two? It's this bundle here. Okay. So it's got to be, uh, do the player win? Oh, no. Uh, play advance past the second match of a tournament. At least two matches. Okay, so where's two matches? I think they've got it wrong here. Well, they've added 13. Hmm. I don't know whether we would agree with that. If you say it's at least, let's unpack this. How many times does the player advance past the second match? Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's not really at least two. Um, oh, no. Yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll count that because uh, advance past the second match means if you've won the second match, you might lose the next one, but you, you got past the second match of the tournament. So, yep, we will count 13 in there. So 13, 8, 4, and 1 is 26 occasions, okay? So what they're getting you to do is understand what the heights of these mean. Okay, that's the idea. Now, when did the player win less than two matches? Well, let's go back and get rid of all the scribble I've got everywhere here. And less than two matches were these two categories here. Okay, 6 and 16. 6, none, and 16, only one. Once, so it's 22 occasions. So, hang on, we'll just go back. It, as a, they didn't ask for a percent, but you could make it as a percentage. Or what's a probability? Um, the player wins less than two matches, so it's 22 players out of 48. 22 chances out of 48. And then percent means per 100, so you could times by 100 and get 45.8%. And you round it off to three figures there. Right, do you get the idea? We are going through that statistical process of data collection, organising data, presenting it, and this time it's with a graph, uh, with a table, and then with a graph, and being able to interpret or uh, discuss it, analyse it, if you like. Okay, let's go on now. So 16C, some for you to do. I think there's a couple more on the next page. So pause the presentation. This is about interpretation or analyzing the data set from a graph and this is organizing it ready to uh, put into a graphical form okay pause it and have a go we'll go over there and here are the rest of them i think there are only five in this set okay i'll show you the answers now oh no two more seven leaf plots so a bit of work to do there go back over the video and make sure you can do it and here are the answers now all seven questions there well, we're nearly coming to the end of this presentation so i hope you're doing well you might have to go back and just study it again let's go on now and uh, this is the final little bit that i want you to think about in this um, series now so it's an activity Decide on a question that you might like to answer in a statistical way, that is, collecting data and so on. What's the most common method of travelling to see? What type of pet is most common? All that. Okay. And I think this is a good project for groups and maybe in pairs and uh, make up questions that you're going to ask. Um, create a survey for the rest of the school, maybe. 
and collect the data from your classmates, the rest of the school. There, you can do it electronically too on something called SurveyMonkey. Ask them to actually complete a survey online. Is your data categorical or numerical? Does it have numbers in it or are you just asking opinions or different word categories or categories that can be described with just words, not with numbers? Organise your data, use a graph, share your findings, present something. All right. Well, that's, that's a bit exciting there because you might have quite a few things you'd like to know people's opinions on or measurements of and so on. So uh, have a go at that. And um, for the moment, it's cheers for now. I'll catch you in the next presentation.